Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the funeral service for Norman MacLeod, late of Glasgow and Garnon, beloved husband of Anne, father of Robert. Uh, he, Norman passed away on the 24th, so it's been quite a challenging time for the family as they wait in the build-up to this on this solemn occasion when we, when we write the final chapter in his journey. And we hope to do that with love and grace for, for all concerned. And uh, I pray today will be a, bring a great sense of comfort and reassurance to you as a family and to the wider family who will be watching, thankfully, on live stream. And on behalf of this congregation, some of you who do remember the family well, and on behalf of those who joined us, we, I wish to express our condolences as a community on your great loss, sad and painful loss. And words convey so little, but we use them because we have to. And we will do our best uh, to express our best words in love and prayer to support you today. Love and support are expressed in many and varied ways. And I pray that you will be the recipients of such acts of love and kindness today and in the days ahead. And I know you've already expressed and received that from what you said at the back. You thank everyone for their prayers, their kind words, and their support at this sad time. The service is being live streamed, so we welcome family and friends from, from your home patch and from further afield who will be watching in. And we pray that you'll all feel very much part of this service of thanksgiving for Norman. And after the service, there will be a short procession behind the hearse down to, down to the, beyond the bridge. And after the interment at Elmore, you are invited to join the family if you so wish and are so able for soup and sandwiches. So as is the, the normal custom at a funeral here, I'd like to begin with a personal tribute, and which is in two parts, the first part by the family and the second part uh, by a friend. So this is a tribute for Norman. Norman was born at 17 Garnon, the youngest of four children, Bella, Faye and Ian. He was a very well-read man with a great passion for history, languages, science and technology and enjoyed lengthy discussions over great books, poetry, religion, and theories of life, the universe, and everything in between. Having left the islands in his teenage years to join the police in Glasgow, he met Anne, his wife of 52 years. They settled in White Street, Party, where they had their son, Robert. Robert had a keen sense of justice, which eventually led to a career in social work in Greenock and Inverclyde where he was a very well-respected colleague amongst the Criminal Justice Department, and equally by the individuals and families he helped and cared for. He was a fair man, a man of great integrity, who up until his dying day had a wealth of knowledge which he was more than happy to share with others. Norman looked forward every year to returning home to Lewis with his family, a place that all the family loved and cherished, and a place that is Norman's spiritual home. He was a humble, quiet and reserved, compassionate man, supportive and caring, who, was, who will be missed by everyone who was fortunate enough to know. Thank you from the family. And now some words from his friend, Jamie. Like many Lewis men of his generation, Norman's working life covered a variety of roles. In his case, unlike many of his contemporaries, it was not fishing or the merchant marine or crofting that shaped his life, but a wide variety of different jobs, ranging from the police to bus driving and culminating in his obtaining his social work qualifications and serving in that capacity for many years, mainly in Greenock. These experiences gave him a comprehensive insight into human nature in all its aspects, and many of his friends will attest to the humour and sound judgment that was so often a feature of his conversation. His Lewis upbringing was very evident in his knowledge of and thoughts on scripture. You had to be a very bold or very rash person to dispute with Norman the source and significance of any biblical reference. And to the end of his life, he exhibited formidable powers of recall, not just of the Bible, but of the huge number of books that he had read during his lifetime. He will be remembered with the greatest affection by his friends, particularly those he knew in party, many of them of Highland origins, and by those further afield who had the privilege of knowing him. Wonderful words which certainly convey to us the, the integrity and the 
soundness and solidness of this man, a man of wisdom and, and com compassion and care. So we thank you for these words. We're going to continue with our service of thanksgiving. It is a, a sad and solemn day, but we're giving thanks for his life, recalling him, who he was, what he meant to you. And so we give thanks to God as we begin with Psalm 23, chosen by the family and, and understandably a, a, a much loved Psalm of Norman. So Psalm 23, we'll stand to sing. <laughs> The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new. Every day, every morning, great is his faithfulness. And this we call to mind, and therefore we have hope as we come before the Lord in prayer and inviting Reverend Thomas Davis from the Free Church to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that um, we can come to you at any stage, at any time, and at any place in life. No matter what our circumstances, no matter what we're going through, we thank you so, so much that, that our access to you is always open, that your ear is always directed towards us, and that, when, that every time we call out to you, you hear us and you draw near to us. And that's our prayer as we come together this morning uh, and as we gather with um, a grieving family and friends that, um, that we would be able to draw near to you 
that you would that you'd pour out your comfort and mercy upon us all anew and that you'd lead us all closer into your presence because we need you more than anything else and so often in life we, we can go go through life um, forgetting that or sometimes um, consciously thinking that we don't need you and yet times like this remind us of how wrong we can be and times like this remind us how precious life is and how hard death can be and we thank you so much that in the midst of all of that we thank you that we can come to you the God of all comfort mercy and grace and so we pray father that you would just draw us all closer to you as we come together um, as a community and as we gather uh, around Norman's family we we pray that you would draw near to each one of us and that we would be aware of your presence here among us that we'd hear your voice speaking and that we would know that we would all know what it means to be held in your hands and we especially want to pray for Norman's family we pray that they would know your comfort and peace and strength um, we pray especially for Anne asking that you would comfort her uh, as she mourns the loss of her husband um, we're all struck by such a beautiful wedding photo on the, the order of service and we thank you for the many many years that they shared together and we pray now father that uh, you would just draw so near to her um, that that you would fill the gap in her heart with um, a deep sense of your peace and your nearness we pray too for robert that you would comfort him as he grieves the passing of his father may he know your presence and strength uh, may your hand be upon him and for all the wider family those grieving the loss of a, a brother and an uncle um, and wider relatives and friends who are here we we pray father that they would be upheld by you and that you'd be really really near to them um, we thank you so much father that when we come to you we don't have to pretend anything we don't have to pretend that we're strong or that we're um, or that we're all sorted we thank you that we can come to you as we are and we pray for everyone here that they would just know your peace and comfort and strength and as we gather here to to mourn we uh, we can't help but think back of memories that that so many people will have um, uh, we think of friendships in this community that have stretched back over many decades and we thank you for that and and for every precious memory that that everybody here has uh, of of norman and we pray that they would be comforted and blessed we thank you for the bonds that we share in our community and we pray that these would remain strong we thank you also for everything that 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 uh, duncan shared about about norman's life and we especially thank you for his work as a, a social worker we, we we thank you for everybody involved in that profession um, it's some such an important work it's one that reminds us of all the, the problems and challenges that that we face as a society and we thank you for all who who have served in that role and who continue to serve in that role but all of that reminds us that that the world is broken and that there are so many needs so many injustices so many things that are wrong and in the midst of that we thank you so much that you've not forgotten us but instead you sent your son to be our savior to call us all back to you we thank you that in a world of of injustice and pain and poverty in a world of of illness in a world of death and grief we thank you that Jesus has come to give us hope and we thank you that he died and rose again and is now calling all people to him and to all who come to him he will not cast out and to all who believe in him he gives the gift of eternal life and it's in the reality of that hope that we come to you today we just thank you so much father that that we can have hope through Jesus and we pray that for all of us here um, that we would all see and understand more of that and so father we thank you that we can come to you we thank you for every blessing you give to us for the gifts of family and friendship and work and community but above all we thank you for the gift of your son our savior jesus and as we uh, 
continue in worship together. And as Duncan leads us, we pray that you'd help us all to hear your voice, that you'd draw us all closer to you, and that you'd bind us closer to one another and closer to you in love in the days and weeks ahead. We ask it all in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus. Thank you indeed, Thomas. And as you mentioned, uh, drawn reference to this beautiful order of service, it really is an exquisite piece of literature that you prepared. And I'd like to just draw your attention, you've probably read already, to the, the proverb on the flip side of it. What comes with the wind will go with the rain. And I do believe it is a genuine, ancient, uh, Gaelic proverb. And uh, it'll be intriguing as to why you why well, you chose that. But from what I've, we've learned about Norman, he was a learned man in literature, language, science, as well as being keen to engage in deep philosophical discussions on a range of matters, the kind of man I would love to have spent time with. Undoubtedly, this, will, this well-known idiom must have cropped up in one of these debates and in times of reflection and may have been specially chosen by the family because of some personal anecdote relating to it. You didn't tell me, but I'm just guessing. But it makes sense, that the proverb it sense, makes sense to us windswept islanders, doesn't it? We are accustomed to the wild elements sweeping over us, the vulnerable exposed island out in the middle of the ocean at the mercy of the elements. And we well know the power of the wind. Some of us recall as far back as the early 50s when on a particular night there were gusts over 120 miles recorded as a a large vessel ran aground down the west side. And the wind that night, what did it bring? It brought night of destruction, a night of fear, fear that many would lose their homes, that the roofs would blow off. And yet on that night, none perished. Everyone was rescued from that boat. So the wind brought a great fear and apprehension. And the wind does come in cycles of mild, strong, and mighty expressions, bringing with it various items loosened by their place of security, such as outhouses, garden seats, and even machinery. It scatters debris randomly, but will it remain where it was blown? Shall what the wind bring, bring stay motionless, or shall some other force come and move it on? Well, according to the proverb, the rain wa comes to wash away the stuff blown in by the wind. Nothing remains static for long in these islands. Weather dominates our lives, and dominates our conversation. But does it have a purpose? Does that weather have a purpose that we can understand and comprehend? Does it make sense to us as human beings? For a lover of poetry and scripture, which Norman was, I'm sure he's well acquainted with the following verses, which speak so beautifully of the spiritual elements which influence our lives, or at least should influence them. These are the words. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty or void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. That's that beautiful quote from the prophet Isaiah. The seasons are governed by the Lord the elements do have their purpose. The wind and the rains do come, but greater still is the eternal purpose of God and his word. That word which he sends forth upon the earth and into the lives of any of us who will gladly receive it, like thirsty ground reaching out for some measure of moisture and refreshment. That word when it comes brings renewal, revival. It brings the fruit of love fruit of faith and hope and trust. Very, very important for us at a time like this. And even more so, the, wind, the word of God enables us to build lives of solid, immovable foundations, as a well-known parable so instructs us. This is Jesus speaking. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. And of course, the converse was equally true. The one who rejected God's word and 
built his house and his life on sand was shown to be the fool. So we are to be wise, learned, erudite, to know the word as Norman did, to know the word of God, to even recite the scriptures, to be knowledgeable of them, but most of all, to apply the word of God personally and spiritually to our hearts and lives. So friends today gathered in respect of Norman, let us do, let you do something in his memory. Take that which was precious to him be it in poetry, be it in the symbolism, be it in the richness of the language of scripture, it is still the wonderful word of God. And let it be a, a memory to you of this day, to dig into your heart and to plant a seed of his word, a word that will hopefully in the days to come bear fruit for you, that you won't let it fall to the ground, but uh, do something in memory of him. Don't go away thinking of the word without taking it in your heart. Norman appreciated linguistic and spiritual beauty. And there's so much beauty in symbolism and in the metaphor that we've read. And, but we want them not just to be symbols, but to be proactive in your life, in your heart, as you take to yourself these wonderful words, that the word of God will find a place in you and bear in you abundant fruit. The imagery of Psalm 103 is very applicable here, where it speaks of the passing of our lives. Some words you well know. Frail man, his days are like the grass, as flower in field he grows. For over it the wind doth pass, and it away is gone, and of the place where once it was, it shall no more be. No, very, very emotive words. And such a wind has blown over Norman. His life has come to an end, and in the places where he was once known, in Glasgow, in Carloway, he's no more to be seen. He's no more to be recognized. But he will live on longer in the hearts and the love and the affections of his family, of his wife, his son, his friends, all who obviously greatly respected this man. He will live on in that capacity. And to summarize the proverb, so which was very important, thank you for including it in the order of service. It was inspirational. Let me quote another well-known hymn to try and fill out some substance to it. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or fall remain? That's the question for you, I trust, for us all to consider. And the answer given to that question is found in the second part of the, of the chorus. The answer is to be grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. And so we commend you to you this day to the Saviour's arms, the Saviour whom you know, whom you've known and cherished for many years, and I know that. And I know that your husband made his place with the Lord secure, and that is the most wonderful reassurance that you, as is believed, will, will can, can cherish for all your days. It is the, the greatest comfort that any of us can... All else is false comfort, but such genuine comfort as knowing his spiritual destiny uh, helps to balance out the pain and sense of loss today. So we can answer some of these questions as we sing our final hymn, and we can tr truly make this a prayer. Don't just sing the words in the final hymn. It says, Oh, may this bountiful God through all our life be near us, be near to you. So let us rise as we sing this final hymn.
may the blessing of this God, this wonderful eternal God, our Father in heaven, who beckons us all to come close to him each and every day, and especially at a time like this when our hearts are tender, when we feel vulnerable and weak, may we bend the knee of our hearts and accept that Christ is that beloved one who came into the world to die for each one of us. So Lord, part us with your blessing, that reassurance that comes from knowing your peace, from knowing your nearness. And may we commit now the family and all that is yet to be done, that it will be conducted with grace, with dignity, and with a sense of your presence. Part us with that rich blessing to which no sorrow is added, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.